very often when I meet new people and they are older than me in their 40s, 50s, whatnot, they have no finances stored away for their financial future. They have nothing for retirement and it's a sad thing to see. Curry, I don't know if you've seen this when interacting with people and talking about finances, but most are not prepared for retirement, I would say. It's funny that you say that. Um, when you say it, all the time, all the time. I mean, I don't care where I go. Uh, I can be at friend's house. I can be at dinner engagement. I can be meeting up with just new groups of people. For the most part, and I'm going to put a number on it, I say 90%, 95% have not even thought about what they thought about investing. If Everybody always have that wishful thinking in their mind somewhere in the ether. But they have never put troop to task to actually start doing it. And I mean, it's all the time. I mean, you can go, you can think about work engagements. You can think about family reunions. You can just think about a barbecue on the weekend. I mean, like, you know, I always tell you conversation, just, just maybe because I'm around the, uh, the concept of finances and different things always come up. And I'm not going to say shock anymore, but when I was first starting off, I was surprised at the number of people that didn't even think about past today. I remember one time I was visiting my family and I was telling my auntie about, you know, hey, auntie, why why nobody in the family, you know, credit is not good. Why are we not talking about getting out of debt? Why are we not talking about building business? And she looked at me and said, baby, don't nobody in our family got money like that. And then just jump to the next subject. Like, it's okay. You know, our family curse is just okay just to have nothing. It should just be normalized and we should just be happy with having nothing. I mean, it's a shocker to me every time. And I just, I just, I, I say I smile at it on the outside, but I cry about it on the inside because it don't have to be like that. It's, that's the simple matter of it. When I meet a lot of people and I would say, yeah, it, you know, it, it's all the time. It, you you would hope that it's at least maybe half and half, but majority of people, 95%, I think that's a good number because <clears throat> there's only been, been less than a handful of people that I've met that actually have something saved away. It's crazy to see people in their mid to late 50s and their 60s that are pushing retirement or retirement age and they have nothing saved at all. They have no investments, no 401k. Um, there's nothing at all. Um, they, they could still be renting. I know some people that are homeowners, they consider, oh, this house, I'll sell it so that I can retire and I'll downsize. That's I think that's a common one that I hear from people is that they always look to retirement as they're going to have to use their house as support to sell and then buy something smaller so that they could live off of that extra that extra cash. And, and the, the funny part about that, and I'm glad you just brought that up, but the funny part about that, imagine somebody that's retiring now. Just, just let's say they're retiring today. Let's say they refinance and just lower their interest payment three years ago, and they're going to retire today. It's going to cost them more per month to downsize than the house that they're living in. Yeah. So... Okay. That that ideal of, oh, I'm just going to take the equity out of my house to live on. I'm a downsize and get a smaller place. But now because the smaller place might be cheaper than where you live, but the interest rate is so high. So now and then the monthly payments will be higher at the, you know, the downsized place than where they're at. So now what do they do? Yep. Yeah. And especially in today's market, I could see I've thought of that, too how that can it doesn't make sense if i downsize right now i would still be paying more or the same because of how high the market is right now especially if i use the loan um now if they paid cash that's different but i don't think many people have built up enough equity to pay cash it's it's crazy because i would think you would have started something in your early years you would have started some 401k at least putting in three percent or something in your 20s 
but there's people that are in their 50s and the only thing they have is a savings account with like maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars and it just shows you like there's some people that have there it's almost like it's too late for them unless they took some drastic risk and tried to pull off what colonel what who is it the colonel sanders guy the guy that founded kfc <laughs> <laughs> like, right, right. You do something like that you, you may have a chance but most people you know it they're not in that situation they're just working a regular day job and i've met people also that don't they don't see retirement they just say no i'm i'm not gonna retire like to them it's too far out of their reach and they just commit to working the rest of their life do you know why or a better way to phrase this question is why do you think people don't at least put the three percent in retirement are not focused on their financial future just just taking a wild guess why do you think that is i would think they would want to keep that money for themselves they don't they just don't want to store it away i don't know like they rather spend it i i I can see i can see the gears of your head turning now because i know you can't even think of how is that possible people won't even think about it no um me being being uh part of you know family and having a lot of friends in this realm uh and i pride myself on understanding people the reason why they don't do it is because like i said in the earlier statement they don't think past today people live day to day day to day that's why paycheck to paycheck they live in this small realm they never think long term you know and then we have that's part of it and then you got the instant gratification then you got people that's thinking retirement is further away than it really is and then next thing you know they wake up and they're in their 50s and they still don't have anything saved uh then you have some people that and that's why uh, President Biden is, I think, in two years, I think 2026, they're going to make it mandatory for people that uh, find new jobs. They're automatically enrolled in a 401k. I, do, is it good, bad, and different? Because and the, th- and the thought behind it is people will not choose to opt out of something if they automatically put into it instead of not being put into it and making that conscious decision to opt into it. So that's that's the, his reason by behind doing that. But people don't think that far. People think, oh, retirement. People think, oh, you got some people in the world that say, oh, I'm just going to find me a, a man that's rich and he's going to take care of me. You know, I'm going to give a warning to you ladies out there. It ain't too many Alex's out there. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, let's be honest. <laughs> Alex might take care of him. Let's be honest. But, um, but yeah, so. But that's but that's what they're thinking. That's that's their that's their mind frame. That's their thought process of hey, live for today. Let's live for just to get to the club on the weekend. Let's just get to hang out with friends. Uh, they don't. That concept is not poured into kids at a young age. And then it's just like I always say: if you study your history, you know family history. That's not a concept that grandparents talked about. You know, at grandparents. You know, especially boomers and before, it was just, hey, get a good job, get a pension, get a good job with a pension, and then 411k will be on top, and that's good. But there's the pension is going away at the Dodo Bird. Look at the big three automakers; those pensions are gone. The big Fortune 500 companies, they're getting rid of pensions. Hell, even the military is getting rid of pensions. Well, full pensions, like they have been doing historically since the beginning of time. The people have lost that concept and didn't understand that's what it was. You know, at least when you got a pension, you were still getting a partial percentage of your paycheck. Then you had Social Security, that was another paycheck. And then if you had some 401k, that's some extra money. That'll, you know, make keep you afloat for, you know, a couple months, a couple years, or something like that. Well, multiple years, but it's not a lot of money. But again, people are not thinking about the numbers of it. And then that's just, you know, in a nut roll, how it comes up. I mean, I know you got family members, friends, and things like that that's getting up there in age and their their savings, their investments, their retirement, it looks like they're going to be working until the day that they die. 
And newsflash to many people out there, if you don't start focusing on your financial future now, you're going to be working to the day that you die. You have to. Because where's the money going to come from? Social Security is not going to bail you out. I mean, Social Security, the average Social Security check is between, I want to say, sixteen to $1,900 a month. You can't even you can't even rent an apartment in Florida for for that amount and include utilities. All the money's gone. You've still forgot about food, auto, gas, maintenance, health care, and all that other stuff. So, where's the money gonna come from if you don't start building for enough? Yeah, and I can't say um, how many people I've met that have had previous jobs and they had a four hundred one k there and they left it. So. Even though they might be trying to enact that program where they're trying to automatically enroll people into jobs, most people don't stay at the same job. And then when they leave to another job, they forget about their 401k. And which is another crazy thing. Like I just it's it's like people don't pay attention to finance or not that they don't pay attention, but they don't put value on it like you should be on top of everything dollar wise in your life. And most people, they just, it's like, they don't even understand what a 401k is. It's like, I think people believe that a 401k is magically going to like open up at retirement age. And then you're just going to receive the money in your bank account. Cause the way that people just forget what brokerage the 401k was, what job they had that had the 401k, what their password is like they don't remember anything it's just lost and forgotten it's almost like that might just help people that are long-term investors because they're going to be receiving more contributions to these mutual funds and index funds and stuff because money's just going to get locked in there and they're never taken out and the reason why that people don't understand it or don't pay attention to all their finances people don't care about gross People don't care about gross income. They don't care about that. Only money they care about is the money they hit their bank account on payday. That's the only money they focus on. Like, you know, me and you, and when I'm talking to people, I'm talking about taxes. I ain't trying to pay taxes. I ain't trying to do nothing. I, I want all my money to go to into investing. So, but people don't think about that. They just saying, what is the net amount of money I got? How can I pay these bills? And how can I have enough to do what I want to do? Most people say, how can I do have enough to do what I want to do? And then whatever's left over, pay the bills. That's that's all the people care about. So that's why you have people that got 401ks in many places. They probably haven't even checked to see what they was invested in in those 401ks since they started. You know, they probably put in, you know, 1% of their paycheck or something like that. Not even up to the match. And then they go to another job because if it ain't net, they have no care about it. They're not thinking about their financial future and... Being a ability to see your financial future, I mean, I'm seeing it firsthand. Um, like, like Alex, like you know, I have a uh, a parent that's in retirement age. She was in a generation that received a pension, uh, received Social Security, and she has enough to, you know, take care of her obligations to take care of herself. But those days are winding thin on people that's getting pensions and Social Security. So most people are just going to have social security. And I have these conversations with uh, my mom about this also. And it's the the same adages. We didn't know. We just thought it was just something that you just put money in and then, oh, you can borrow from it. If when times get hard, that was quote unquote, the emergency fund, you know, borrow from it when times get hard or, and then maybe at the end of, at the end of it, then there's money there. But then the truth is, Reality hits people at the most inopportune time. You know, forced, forced retirements. Uh, as you see right now, St Stellantis, uh, formerly Chrysler, they just signed that new deal with UAW. Now they're they're forcing or asking people to voluntarily retire, uh, 6,500 people to voluntarily retire. Life hits you at an inopportune time. And for those people that he's asking to voluntarily retire, if 6,500 people don't volunteer, voluntarily retire, they're going to force 6,500 people to retire. How many of those people are financially set up to be ready? And then next thing you know, life hits them and then 
What? Because if we stick it to our number of 90, 95 percent, then 6,200, 6,300 of those people are not ready to retire financially to be able to live off whatever pension if, you know, Chrysler or Stellantis is still giving a pension. And then they probably still got a couple more years for Social Security, don't know what they did with their 401k. And then now they're trying to figure out life and trying to find a second, third or fourth job just to make ends meet. And then you're working until the day you die. If people want to live that life, go ahead. But you have this channel and you have many others out there just trying to help people to escape that rat race and to do other things out there to better themselves, to have a retirement life that everybody wants to, you know, travel and, you know, hang out with the grandkids and walk through parks and all that other great stuff that people want to do that they say they want to do when they retire. But the reality is 95% of those people never get to see those days when they hit their golden years. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, hit the subscribe button, comment below, and we'll see you in the next video. See you guys.